Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to take a close look on the pollen. Now, before we jump into the pollen, let us look at the features of a flower. And this is where pollen grains are made. And so the flower, we have a part is called the stamen, which is the male part of the flower. We have the anther. We have the filament. And both the anther and the filament make up the male part of the flower. We also have the female part of the flower, which is called the pista or the carpel. The female part is made up of the stigma the style, and the ovary. Now let's look at the pollen grain. Now the pollen grain is made up of two cells. One cell which is called the tube or the vegetative cell. And we also have another cell which is called the generative cell. Now in both cells, we have nuclei, and so the tube or vegetative cell is composed of the vegetative nucleus, while the generative cell also has a nucleus, which is called a generative nucleus. We're going to see the importance of these nuclei in a short while. Also, we have on the pollen grain, which is a external membrane, which is called the exine. The internal membrane is called the intine. And we also have what they call a germ pore or a aperture. Now let's look at the tube or your vegetative cell. Now the purpose or function of the tube or vegetative cell is to form the pollen tube that directs the sperm cells towards the ovules. The germ pore or the aperture, it is very important in helping to form the pollen tube as well. And now for the generative cell, the generative cell is important to produce the two sperm cells. So the nucleus will divide to form two sperm cells. Now, very importantly, to talk about the nucleus within the tube or vegetative cell will form what are called the pollen tube. After the pollen tube is formed, then what will happen is that the nucleus of the generative cell will divide and after that division takes place then the nuclear membrane will disappear and the two new sperm cells will swim down the pollen tube and they will go towards the ovules within the ovary. Now we also have different shapes of Pollen grains, we have those that are winged, those that are smooth and light, those that are spiky, and those that are sticky. The ones that are winged and smooth and also light, they are for wind pollination. Those that are sticky and spiky are used in insect pollination. And here we have a, our little lesson on pollen. And so I want to tell you that I appreciate you watching this lesson and I want you to live your purpose. Have a safe and blessed week.